have sailed. I have moved about this world of ours, and ever in search of the finest of its kind, we bring you the tops in spine chillers. <laughs> The creaking door. Take pleasure in presenting The Creaking Door. Corridors, two men are walking, men from different worlds, a warder and a prisoner. The prisoner is a young man with his life before him, life behind bars. And yet, this man is in the grip of something stronger even than the soulless jail. He is terrified of something that lurks in wait for him out there on the moors. Come in. Uh, Bolton, sir. Number 773842. Wait outside, Warder. Yes, sir. Here you go, Bolton. You wish to see me, Bolton? Yes, sir. I request a change of occupation, sir. But you must see the chief order. I'm the governor of this prison, and our functions are different. Warder Grayson refused me a change of job, Mr. Hall. And you wish me to override his orders? Bolton, you must remember that you're a prisoner and that you're imprisoned for a most heinous crime. I'm innocent, sir. It was a mistake. Yes, 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 Bolton. Bolton, you were found guilty by a jury and sentenced by a judge for the crime of murder. I merely administer the law. But I might point out that until very recently you would have hanged for this crime. Sir, please listen to me. Very well. Uh, this sounds crazy. Maybe it is. Please put it down to mental illness or anything you like, but I'm haunted, sir. Haunted? <laughs> Bolton, I've now heard every excuse for a man wishing to change his occupation. Where are you working? On an outside working party, sir. I'm working outside the prison walls, digging in the peat bog, sir. It's only when I'm working that I see it. The ghost, eh? Describe it. It's the figure of a woman in a long dress, sir. And do the other prisoners see it? I don't think anybody but me sees the ghost, sir. Or, or somebody else would have come to you. I have your file here, Bolton. You were sent to imprisonment for life by Mr. Justice Wellworth for the murder of Norma Jane Harrison. Is it this unfortunate young woman's ghost, you say? No, sir. Norma was a blonde with a ponytail, a small girl. This is a tall person with chestnut hair. She stands in the peat bog and beckons to me. Give me another job. I, I can't stand it anymore, please. Your occupation is a most important one. With the other prisoners in the party, you are engaged in digging the foundations for a new portion of this prison. You are, in fact, working on the section to be occupied by the new wall. Ah, you're young and strong. The work must prove beneficial. Request dismissed. I shall ring for the warder to return you to your cell. Huh? Ah, here you go, Baldwin. Hello, kid. Where you been? I've been to see the governor, then. I wonder why you went to see him now. I'm trying to get my job changed, then, that's all. You know, kid, I like you. I wouldn't want nothing to happen to you. Well, what could happen to me? Well, one of them needles we use for sewing mailbags might slip. Or some naughty convict might have kept a razor bladed away somewhere. 
He might go mad, see? Then why threaten me? I mean you no harm. No. Listen, son, this is a jail. It's the man who strikes first that wins here, not the scholar like you. Please, then, I swear I'd never hurt you. You're my cellmate. Look, son, I was one of the big-time gangsters outside. That's no lie. I know, then, it was in all the papers. Look at my record. Robbery with violence, attempted murder, grievous bodily harm, and the rest. I've got pals on every landing. Then I'm not working against you. Then why go to the governor? You grassing on me. Breathing Len's little secrets in all's ears, eh? No, I swear, I, I'm not Len. I wondered why they put you in here with me. A dirty stool pigeon, that's what you are. No, no, Len. Then tell me why you went to see all. Spit it out and be honest, my watch. I'll tell you the truth. But then you promise not to tell the others. Tell me the truth. And I'll know if you lie to me. I'm haunted. Honestly, I'm not lying. Well, why didn't you tell me? Mate, there's thousands of blokes get haunted in jail. You're going a little bit jail crazy, that's all. Look, when a man like me says he can stand ten years penal servitude, that means he's tough. He can come out, spit the world in the face and go on. I see this ghost when I'm working. Honestly, a woman with chestnut hair. You'll serve ten years at most. This is my eighth conviction. I've got to do fifteen years. It's that or escape. I'll be beside you on the job tomorrow. Don't you worry about that thing, kid. Just take it easy. And live to be an old man. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on, you men. I'd like to have you to myself for a minute, you lousy screw. Shit, Who cares? Look, Sam, this is healthy lark, digging Pete. I can get in the library if I like. Live like a lord. Know why I work here? I've always wondered. Man. First, it keeps me fit. Second, half me day, I'm in the open air. Now, what's wrong? Oh, ah, look, I'm all right. Stop talking, Bolton. Back to it. Just don't hear it. I'm going mad, then. No, 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 no. Not me, please. Take it easy. There's nothing there. Hey, hey, it's as real as your meat. It's here, I tell you. Pointing, pointing. What if you see that man? No, look away. No, Honestly, I see her. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Kid, let me tell you something. You're lucky to be back in the cell. They might have clapped a straight jacket on you. I was scared of that. Then, then, thanks for everything. Why did she pick me? Why me? You didn't see her. Yeah. Is it this dame you killed? I didn't. I, I didn't. I didn't kill anybody. If I was to take up Paul, every man in this jail would be innocent. Wouldn't be a guilty man inside. You won't believe it, but I'm innocent. Tell me about this murder, son. I, I hardly knew her. I met her a few times. She was very pretty, very small, nice figure. What was her name? Norma. Norma Harrison. Well, she must have got too deep in with one of the gangs. She was that sort. Not much more than a teenager. Pretty. An eye for quick money. Ah, the coppers must have had a case against you, son. Some of her stuff was in my room. A handbag, umbrella, the knife that killed her. My fingerprints on all of it. You've got no hope. You're in for life. So am I. Well, I've decided to do something about it. What can you do? What can any of us do? Escape. No, anything but escape, Len. You lose all good conduct marks and have a sentence too on top of it for escaping. Listen, kid. Sorry, Len, I'd like to be free, but I'm not trying anything. I've told you too much, kid. I can't trust you now. Before I leave, I've got to take care of you. All my friends will. Please, Len, please. It's too bad, Bolton. You come my way or I'll make dead sure you meet with an accident. Now, what do you say? Can I say? That's a good boy. I thought you'd see reason. <laughs> Any minute, I'll deal with him. 
Then we head for the inner walls. Now, the, the minute we... Hear that? That's water loaded. Now, quiet. I got me bed stripped. The minute he sees that through the Judas hole in the wall... Now. So what do you mean I've got something for you, mate. Uh, uh, He's unconscious. Come on. Just a minute. Let's get his gun. You said, you said nobody would be hurt. I need the gun. Come on, son. Keep in the shadows and move slowly. It's open, then. Right. Now keep to the shadows as much as you can. Run for the peat bog. Where we usually work, and from there to the road. You get it? All right. All right. Open the door. Now you got the idea? They're sure to see us. But by then, we'll be near the peat bog. You gotta run. You gotta run for your life. Are you all right? Yes. Except that peat bog. Right, never mind that now. Can't you see I'm in convict's clothes? They say I'm a murderer. Are you? No. Oh, come. Uh, uh, just a few more yards. Uh, there was a lot of blood, but you're going to be all right. Two hours ago, I thought my end had come, but no. No. Did I tell you? Did I tell you why I'm in convict's clothes? You're in convict's clothes because you've been punished for a crime you did not commit. Just as I, too, was wrongly accused. Why do you live here on the edge of the moors all alone? Because I have to. But I, I don't understand. Understanding will come to you in time. Then you will know that the things they have said about me are also untrue. But you don't know me. How can you believe in my innocence? I haven't told you about the... You are innocent. And in that lies my future, my hope. You're the woman I've... By the peat bogs, where we were digging. What are you? Who are you? And you, a creature of flesh and blood, have gazed upon me without fear. I have lived alone because of my sorrows. And now you have released me. I, Anna, thank you. Goodbye. I must go. Well, well, well. Young Bolton certainly has got himself bogged down, so to speak. Something very creaking doorish seems to be happening. A certain it has had a disturbing effect on our would-be escaped convict. Anna, Anna, come back. He's coming come around, back. sir. Still delirious. Anna. Bolton, can you hear me? Anna, come back. Anna. I don't think we can do anything with him yet. How long did you say he was lying in the peat bog before he was picked up? No, not long, sir. Found him in a matter of minutes. I gave strict instructions that Waters... Excuse me, to... sir. It wasn't the water who shot him. It was the prisoner he escaped with, Leonard Grover. Poor Bolton. I'd give anything for this not to have happened. Oh, what a terrible mistake we made. Oh, no. Oh, no. Why do you say a uh, terrible mistake, sir? Oh, perhaps I should have told you. However, even though you are Chief Warder, I was asked by Scotland Yard to keep the matter secret. Secret, sir? Inspector Fairweather of the murder squad received information that suggested that they'd probably convicted the wrong man. Wrong man, Governor? Mm, seems so. Well, Although he was in charge of the investigation, Fairweather asked me as Governor to see that Bolton and Grover were placed in the same cell. We had the cell bugged. 
We were hoping that Grover might react when confronted with the man he framed. Well, he reacted all right, but not the way he anticipated. Uh, Forced Bolton to escape with him in order to kill him. Come back, Anna. I was frightened of you at first, but not oh. now. If this man dies, we're responsible for his death. Oh, I should never have put him in the same cell. Governor Hall speaking. Check the police station. Sergeant Forrest speaking. All right, Sergeant. Uh, Governor Hall, sir. We've got your man. You have? Good. Uh, where? How? He was found asleep in an airloft. I'm afraid he wounded Farmer Muggridge. Luckily, Mr. Muggridge had a couple of his farmhands with him. Oh, well done. Keep him under lock and key. I've just received information from Scotland Yard that the case against him is complete. Bolton is to receive a free pardon, and Grover is to be charged with the murder of Norma Harrison. I'll send one of my men over right away. Very good, sir. Yes? Uh, Dr. Simmons sends his compliments, sir. You can see the patient now if you'd like to. Oh, yes, I would. Very much indeed. Have you seen him? What's he like? Well, sir, once I gave him the glad news that he was going to be set free, he was a changed man. Oh, poor chap. Suffering as he did. Crime he didn't commit. No wonder he was delirious. Oh, well. Uh, I'll go and see him right away. Well, that's the story, Bolton. We'll try and make you as comfortable as possible until the doctor signs your release certificate. Of course, you can walk around and do anything you wish. Grover? Grover killed Norma? Unbelievable. But why? Because of you. When he found out that you and she were having an affair, he decided to kill her and then left a series of so-called clues to incriminate you. The fact that you'd threatened her publicly didn't help. Uh, I must get back to the cottage. The cottage, Mr. Bolton? Yes, where the warders found me. <laughs> There's some mistake. You were recaptured within half a mile of the prison. You were shot down in the peat bog where you'd been working. But the cottage... Anna, she helped me. Cottage? But there isn't a cottage for at least ten miles. I'm afraid you were rather delirious. But I ran from the peacock. I saw a light in the cottage window. And she, Anna, she came and helped me. Oh, remember how I came to you, Governor, and asked for a change of job? I was so afraid of the apparition. I thought it was an apparition. And all the time, it was Anna. Anna, whom I've known for but a few minutes. And yet I feel she's been part of my life. It's your imagination, old chap. You were overwrought. Oh, who wouldn't be? Sentenced to life for a murder you didn't commit? I tell you, I spoke to her. She took me into her cottage. Don't you understand? Of course I understand. That swine shot you in the back. You were delirious. Now, you get some rest, old chap. Otherwise, I'll have Dr. Simmons on my tail. <laughs> They are releasing you, as you have released me. Yours was a matter of months. My spirit has been captive for two centuries. Anna, Anna... I said goodbye before, but I had to come back. But this time, it's goodbye until eternity. Anna, Anna, Anna... What's, what's the matter? Look at you, you look as though you've seen a ghost. Hey, you mustn't get out of bed. I'm not a prisoner now. The governor said I could do what I liked. I'm going over to the peat bog. That's where I first saw her. Perhaps... Never mind. Get my clothes. Look, I'll have to... Oh, here comes the governor. Sir, this patient says he wants to get dressed, wants to go out of the prison hospital. He can do whatever he wishes to do, orderly. Mr. Bolton is a free man. Where do you want to go to? I'm going out on the moor. Is that wise? You're still very weak, you know. You yourself said that... Yes, yes, all right, Mr. Bolton. But do you mind if I and two warders accompany you? Just for your own safety. I have no objections. What's the matter with you, Warder? Oh, I don't know, sir. It's a warm night, and yet I feel a chill come over me, sudden-like. Look at this, sir. It's a bit strange. Show me. What's strange? This earth. Working party was over there. It looks as though the earth has been turned over or something. Well, the earth is quite fresh. For the second time, Governor. You're going to think I'm mad. I don't know why or how, but I need the spot to be dug. Deep, deep down. Oh, come now. You said you would do anything to compensate me for what has happened. I want a working party to dig here by the spot. All right. Water. Get hold of a working party. 
Now, look, Fulton, we've been digging now for three hours. Well, off he... It's, it's a woman. Show me. Uh, oh, no. Hold him. Hold him. Let me go. Let me go. Oh, oh no, my honor. Great. So well preserved. She's alive. I know she is. I told you I saw her walking over the peat box. She's... I don't care whether she's a ghost. Please, Governor Hall, bear with me, miss. Look, Bolton. If we're to retain our sanity, there's an explanation for all this. Although, how anybody could be in such a perfect state... Oh. Remove the rest of the feet. Now, now, please try and control yourself, Mr. Bolton. Control yourself. I've had the... the body removed to the prison mortuary. The mortuary? She's not dead. To the hospital. <laughs> Absolutely incredible, in perfect preservation. What do you mean? The body. It's the body of a woman named Anna Grant. Anna? Uh, let me tell you how I found her name. The parish registers are kept at Chagford. I discovered that this woman, Anna Grant, was buried alive. Buried alive? Uh, Two hundred years ago. And she was branded as a witch and buried in unhallowed ground. It's all there, recorded in the register. Uh, she was buried in the year 1748. Strange you should be found above the body of this Anna Grant. What? Why? What's the matter? I don't know. You with your practical mind. Why was the body so well preserved? Tell me that. Oh, the answer to that is simple. Dr. Simmons supplied that. It's the chemicals in the peat. Have you no imagination? Please, take me to the body. All right. Are you sure that would be a good thing to do? Yeah. <laughs> Where are you two after? Now, Mr. Bolton wants to look at the body. Uh, don't you think you're better off staying with your dream? You saw her for a few fleeting seconds. Now she's lying on a cold marble slab. Uh, why upset yourself? For the same instinctive urge that took us to the place where Anna was buried. I must see her and talk to her. Oh, talk to her, really? Anna. Yes, Anna. Yes, I can hear her. Oh, now, really? Shh, 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 shh. Yes. But it won't be a sacrifice. But that's where I want to be. Wherever you are. Gladly. Look at her. She's... She's crumbling into dust. He's fainted. He's fainted. Just a moment. No, Gaffer. He hasn't fainted. He's... He's dead. What a terrible thing to have happened to him. After all he's been through... Do we know what has happened to him now? It's terrible. Do we really know anything? Well, well, well. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. And show me the ghost that a convict can trust. Or, to paraphrase the words of another old song, Can a body meet a body coming through the moon? <laughs> this is your host back again. Just a reminder of our rendezvous next week. Where are we going? Through the creaking door, of course. <laughs> Invite you to listen next Saturday at nine o'clock when they will again present The Creaking Door. <laughs> <laughs>